Hello, my name is Kelly Bluen. I am a certified Zentangle teacher, and this is my friend Audrey Schatz. Hi, guys. And she is a watercolor artist and a watercolor teacher. I've been taking classes with her for a couple of years, and she's absolutely amazing and has agreed to do this collaboration with us. So we have been working on Zentangling our May floral garden, and I thought it would be a fun collaboration at the end to have her show us how to add color to it or to any other piece of Zentangle that you work on. So this is gonna be a two-part series. I'm gonna show you how to make the Zentangle garden, and then she's gonna jump in and show us how to make it beautiful. Okay, let's All get All right, started. let's get started with our materials, and then we will begin to draw. So I'm using my Micron PN plastic nib pen. The Secura brand of Micron pens are waterproof. So for this particular project, we're going to be doing the ink drawing first, and then adding watercolor and you don't want it to bleed. So if you can use a water waterproof pen, that would be preferred. Okay, and then I also have my pencil and blending tool. I am not going to add shading today. So I'll probably just be using the pencil, but I've got this in case I need it. And I also have my eraser. As far as painting goes, part two is gonna be adding the paint. And I'm going to have a link below in case you would like these materials and don't have them yet. But I am using an eight brush which is a pretty thick brush with a thin tip and then Audrey what size brush are you using? I'll have a size 10 round watercolor brush. So she has a size 10 so you can see it's larger but um, she's very comfortable using this larger one to do even small things because of the tip. So use whatever size you want. We'll link both of these sizes below. And then for the watercolor we are using this brand and that will be linked as well. I got a little reflection on it but this has an amazing assortment of colors and any watercolor set that you have will work. We're gonna to stick to some pretty primary colors today and do a little bit of blending of those. But if you would like this watercolor set, it's amazing. Okay, so let's get started with our garden. So if you followed along with the May florals, we did 23, and maybe actually 24 different floral patterns. And today I've just chosen four of them to include in this little composition. If you would like to pick other ones, then please go right ahead. So I am using the Canson 140 pound, let me grab my little book here, Canson 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. Okay. All right, let's begin. So this is Audrey's first time doing Zentangle. And typically Zentangle is non-representational, so it's not the best for her first class. However, I think it will um, be a fun little challenge and we'll get to see it, um, how her work is turning out. So we are also using a five by seven. We cut the paper down to five by seven just to make it a smaller work surface today. All right, let's begin by putting in a frame. And to do that, I'm going to put a dot in each of my four corners. And then I'm going to connect those. And I'm not going to worry about making a perfectly straight line. I'm just gonna let my pen do the work. I'm connecting all four of those. And it's a good thing we don't want a straight line because I think I'm incapable of making straight lines. All right, and then I like to add another layer to this. So I'm gonna go on the inside and I'm going to put in another frame line. And I love that this creates this little frame for our work to go inside and um, it just kind of makes it look cute. Okay, our frame is done. Let's get going on some florals. All right, so I'm going to begin with I believe it's called Maluhia Pua um, from Debbie Monero. And I'm actually gonna write it on the back in case you would like to know this. Maluhia Pua, which is Hawaiian. Debbie Monero. Okay. So this one is not a floral, it's a leaf, and I just I just love it. So I'm gonna put one right here and I'm gonna let it kind of cross over part of my paper. So I'm just gonna put in this curved line 
Sorry, Audrey, is it hard for you to see because I'm at a different angle, or are you good? I think it's good. Okay. <laughs> I'm not used to filming with somebody. It's so fun <laughs> having her in the, in the room here. Okay, and then we put a nice wide V shape at the bottom. And then a smaller V shape part way up. And then I think I've got room. No, I'm going to stop right there for a moment. Okay. So now we're going to put these curves on each side of the V's. So a curve and a curve. Look how cute that already is. And then a curve and a curve on this one. And that one. And I could do one more, but I think I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to put my curve coming part way down my stem. You can make these as long or as short as you would like. Okay, and then the cute little part of this is that we add this little embellishment where we do a nice quick curve out and then we end in a fescue shape, which is that little teardrop. And often I will color these in, but Audrey said it'd be fun to leave them empty and we can add watercolor to those. So we're gonna do one on each side and I like making mine go over my frame. I just think that's kind of a cute look. So if you've got room and it goes off the frame, then go right ahead. And then we'll do two more. All right, we've got our first little piece in. I think I'm gonna go ahead and add another one to this side and then we'll put some of the florals in the middle. So I'm gonna do another one over here and I would like them not to be so matchy-matchy. I want this one to maybe be a little bit taller or shorter. Um, we've got some other elements to put in the top. So however you do this, it'll turn out amazing. How's yours, Audrey? Aww. It's smaller. Audrey really also, good. besides being a watercolor artist, is an amazing sketch artist. So her stuff always looks incredible. Okay, so I'm gonna put one right here. And I just realized I put mine really close to the frame, which is gonna be hard to fit in my, my V shapes. So if you didn't do yours yet, you can move it over a little bit. And then my V shape is gonna start at the bottom and I'm gonna go right over my frame because I can and because none of you are gonna tell me not to. And I'm gonna go ahead and put in those curves on that V right away just so I can see how it's taking shape. And then I'm gonna do another set of V, another set of lines, a little bit smaller maybe, and put in those curves. And I'm gonna do one more set before I do the top. So I want this one to be a little bit taller. And if you don't have enough room at the top, then just extend your line a little bit and then put in those cute curves. All right, now we put in those little flicks of our pen with that fescue teardrop shape coming out the sides, leaving those empty so we can add some color. And because I have three of the V's, I need three sets of those little fescue. All right, I'm gonna grab Audrey's so we can see how, look at that, oh, look how beautiful hers are. And see how ours are not exactly identical, like she takes up different space than I do, and I love that. Okay, thank you. Are you having fun, Audrey? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was telling her, like she said, this is her first like Zentangle class, but um, this isn't even your typical Zentangle. Usually it's repeatable patterns in a smaller space. So this is more of an organic thing, but that's okay. All right, so we got those two in. Let's now go to Veruca. And again, I'm gonna write that on the back. And Veruca is by Veronica Vesquez, Vesquez Orozco. I'm probably saying the name wrong. All right. Veruca. So I'm going to put in one Veruca and I'm going to have it come up this way and sort of the opposite of this one, come up this way and land just above it. Um, or maybe, Audrey, do you think I should do the little henna drum things at the top first or put those in later, these ones? 
Mm, you could do that to save the space. Okay, I'm gonna switch a little bit here. I'm gonna go to Henna Drum. So I'll write that one down. Henna Drum, I think, is my all-time favorite tangle by Jane McCougler. CZT. Okay, so we're gonna put our henna drums in because I wanna make sure we have space for these before we add the other florals. So henna drum, I'm going to do off of another round fescue type shape like we did down here. Okay, so I'm gonna put one in. I'm gonna come right off the top of my paper and give it like this backwards J with that fescue. And I'm gonna do another one over here. And I need room for the henna drum shape to kind of be lying on top of this. So I'm gonna have this one come down a little ways and curve in like that. And then my henna drum's gonna sit here. And I'm gonna show you another version where I actually made it come out a lot more. Depends on how you wanna fill in that space. Okay, so for henna drum, we do a little like crescent moon type shape or a backward C. And usually I would ink that in, but we're going to leave it open so that we can add some color. And then we're gonna do an aura, which is a line that walks beside another. And then our henna drum petals. So these, I often do the first one right in the center and then I go on both sides. So to do that, I'm gonna make this like wide V shape. So I leave some space on that little C that we made. And then the top of your petal can be real zigzaggy or very wavy. I'm gonna make mine just have a couple of little bumps. And then I'm gonna go beside that one and do another and another. And then I'm gonna come out this way and I stop mine when I get to that fescue shape. How's it going? <laughs> Yours is so beautiful, oh, I love it. I'm a little stressed out, but I like it. <laughs> Don't be stressed. I'm new at this. Okay, <laughs> then we're gonna add a long line in the middle of each of those. And I like to put a little dot hovering at the end. And then two short lines, one on each side, just giving it some texture. Okay, look how cute that looks. All right, the next henna drum is gonna be filling up this corner over here. So I made mine really short and I'm gonna show you, I kind of want it to be longer. So I'm actually gonna add a second fescue so that I've got a better space to do it. You do not have to add the second one if your, if your first one comes out far enough. I just made mine really short. So I'm gonna add a second one. All right, and then we put in that C shape and then the aura. I think the aura is such a beautiful part of this pattern because it separates that middle. And you can put in that first petal and your second petal and just keep going around. In here, I don't have room for a full one, so I'm just gonna end it part way. And now that I added a second fescue over here, I feel like I wanna add one over here as well, just to fill in this space a little bit. So if you've got a big space over there, go ahead and throw one in. Okay, this is looking amazing. So now we're gonna make um, two more floral patterns and I think a total of three flowers in this space. So we're gonna do Veruca, and then we're also gonna do Flux Blossom. All right, so for Veruca, if you wanna grab your pencil and kind of pencil in where these three are going to go, that might be easiest. And I like to make like a light circle where I want my bloom to land. So I want Veruca to land about here. So I'm just putting in a light circle, and I'm gonna let the stem 
curve. These can be curved or straight, it doesn't matter. And then for flux blossom, I wanna do one a little bit lower, so maybe about here. And then one up here in this space. So see how I don't have a lot of um, empty space left? And if you see you've got a lot of empty space, then move something over a little bit or move something a little higher. Okay. Are we ready for Veruca? Mm -hmm. You got yours ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. So Veruca begins with a flux shape. No, it does not. That's um, flux blossom. Veruca begins with let's see it begins with the stem so i'm gonna ink in that line that i made and i'm gonna do an aura beside it nice and thin for that stem and then at the top of this we put in this little curve shape that's almost a full oval it starts down the stem of it and it curves up and then comes back around to the other side. And if your stem is thicker, you'd have this really beautiful little white area in there, but mine is kind of, kind of close together. And then we ink in the parts that are not the stem. So we ink in that oval. Again, there's supposed to be a little bit of white there, but I kind of, I kind of made that too tight. And then we do another oval with an aura. So we start it underneath that first oval and circle around. Okay, now I want you to kind of ignore your pencil lines when you do this. We don't have to fit this flower into the pencil line. We can just draw right over it. So if that's bothering you, then go ahead and erase them. And I want this to be nice and big. So my first petal is going to, I'm gonna put two little notches down here because I want it to be wide. And we're gonna come up quite high and then loop around and the top's gonna to be wider than the bottom. Awesome. <laughs> and then we're gonna do one off the side, just come down a tiny bit and then jump off the side and come down a little bit more for the next one and jump off and come down. I think I'm gonna do one more. I love how you say jump off and come down, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I think you don't think it's actual Zentangle terms, but it's what works, right? <laughs> so the same thing on the other side, come down a little bit, jump off and come down. And as you can see, I'm gonna bump into my leafy, um, Maluhia over here, and that's okay. I'm gonna let it go behind. So I'm gonna jump down, or step down a little bit, jump, lift my pen, and come back down. And I need one more, and that's gonna start behind my leaf. So I'm just gonna imagine where it is and where it comes down. Yours might not touch your leaf, but it might. Let me show you Audrey's. Look how beautiful that is. She's never done this before. Okay, so now we need two. Let's add some little flicks in here. I feel like it's too plain. Let's add some flicks and a dot. So a flick is we push down hard and then lift our pen as we go up. Okay, that's got a little bit more personality and we'll add some leaves in a minute. All right, the last one is Flux Blossom. This would be such a fun project to do several times and pick other floral patterns from that series that we just did. I just picked ones that were easier to fill in, so that's why I chose those. Flux Blossom is by, I think it's Maniata. And then what did I write? D-H-A. She is a CZT. Okay, here we go. I also like that Audrey, as a beginner, doesn't write down 
the names of the tangles. And those of us that have been doing it forever are like obsessed. And when I first started, <laughs> I never wrote down the names. I'm like, I don't care, I'm just drawing. And like now as like a seasoned Zentangler, I always make sure like I have the name of the tangle and the person so I can Google them later and figure <laughs> things out. Where Audrey's over here just like, oh, is that even important? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's so cute. All right, Flux Blossom. I feel like I'm going a little bit fast, but I want to keep this first portion under 30 minutes. So I'm talking kind of fast, guys. All right, Flux Blossom. I'm going to put it in this area here. So I'm going to begin at the bottom of that circle that I started. And I'm going to put in, I think I want to actually move it over even a little bit. I don't have so much space over here. Okay, so I begin with a flux shape that has the point at the bottom and then bumps up and comes back down to a point. And then in Veruca, we stepped down and went out. For this one, we're actually gonna bump up. So I go towards the top, I bump up and make that one taller and also nice and wide. Got that? Mm -hmm. And then we do the other side as well. Bump up and out. Once we get those first three in, we connect the two ends with a cute little round middle. And then we need to imagine this flux shape coming out the back. So I'm gonna put in a wide V at the center, so like it's it's not really a V, it's just an angled line, a space and an angled line. And then we connect those as a petal. And now we can bump down again and out nice and wide on both sides. And then we do it again and come down and just touch the side of those side petals. Okay? Yay! All right, we're gonna do one more. Are you okay over there? Yes. <laughs> you look panicked. Okay, so we're gonna do one more up here and I'm gonna begin wherever I want the bottom of that flower to land and try not to make it too tiny. Um, and my friend April, if you're watching, she tends to draw really small and then she has like too much space around it. I'm calling you out, April. Mm -hmm. Okay, so try to draw nice and big. We got a lot of space to fill here. So we're gonna start with that point at the bottom and we're gonna bump way up and back down. And then we bump from the side. We're gonna go up a little bit taller and nice and wide, purposely make it wide. Same on the other side. It's almost like there's a heart hiding in the background. And then we're going to connect those two with a nice round bump. And that little like V shape on the top, it just helps me center it and it helps me know how wide I wanna make it. And then I bump up and just do a curve. It's about half the size of the ones in front because we're only seeing part of it. Go to the side, go down a little bit, come out nice and wide, and nice and wide on the other side. And then we do one more bump and connect down to these. If you need more petals, it's okay. These are made up flowers, it doesn't matter what you do. All right, I need to add some little details and I need to go back up to this henna drum up here where I forgot to add details as well. So let's add these lines and dots, line and dot on each petal. Imagine where it comes out the back. And I'm gonna do the one down here. And then in the center, I'm going to do just some kind of cross hatching. Just gonna put in some straight lines and then some curves, lifting my pen once in a while to add that little bit of like a reflection. The 
some straight lines. Add those curves, but lift your pen. And let's go over to Henna Drum and let's add in that long line with the little dot on top. This is so fun. Do you like it? Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. All right, and then we're gonna do the short lines on each side. Pause if I'm going too fast, I apologize. Okay, that looks good. And now let's add in some stems on these two. So this one I'm gonna make go straight down and I'm gonna start wide at the top and then I'm gonna come straight down. Wide at the top and then make it a little thinner. And this one I'm gonna give a little bit of a curve too because I've got a lot of space here. If you have a whole lot of space and you wanna put another little flower in there, you can. But I'm just going to curve this one down um, just slightly. All right, let's add a couple of leaves. And I've got lots of space to work with here. So I like the idea of adding a leaf that sort of matches the petal. So I'm gonna do a nice big flux shape right there and I'm gonna do one down here. These are imaginary flowers anyway, so wherever you put them is fine. I'm gonna do my line and a couple of dots this time. And if you curve that slightly, it gives that leaf a little bit of a a curvy feel. For this little guy down here, I think I'm just gonna give him one and I'm gonna have it come up from the ground. Make it nice and large. And if you like balance and you wanna do two, go ahead and do two. All right, this Veruca over here, it has basically that similar um, leaf shape. So if you wanna do that again, or you can do something completely different. I think I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm just gonna go, maybe I'll make it a little more curvy at the bottom. Kind of curve in a little bit. I'm gonna line in a couple of dots. Okay, I thought it'd be fun to add a little ladybug that is not Zentangle at all, but I've got this space over here, so I'm gonna put in a bump, little line on the bottom, give him some cute little legs, his little head, and you're welcome to put a face on there or just color it in black. I think I'm just gonna color mine in and then do some little antenna and spots. All right, and we're gonna add a few more embellishments to kind of fill in the space. So I'm gonna go up here. I've got lots of space up here. So I'm gonna add in that flux shape. And I'm gonna do kind of large, and I'm gonna do two of them right next to each other. See how that just fills that in. And then I'm gonna do a curly fescue coming out of it. I've got some space over here, so maybe I'll just do a little fescue or two. See how we can just take elements from the things we've already used. I've got space down here, so maybe I'll just put in one of these little leaves from the Maluhia. So I'll just put in a straight line. I'll just put one of these guys down here. I could always add a fescue to it as well. And over here I've got some space. I'll do a couple more flux. A 
the little fescue. What do you guys think? Feel free to add more or less. This is gonna be so fun to watercolor. I'm so excited. <laughs> it's so fun to sketch or zentangle. Yay! <laughs> All right, let me see yours. Right, let's slide this over here. <gasps> Look at that. I love how it's the same, but it's also not the same at all. Mm -hmm. Even her ladybug's facing a different direction than mine. <gasps> That's so beautiful. I love it. All right, so we have finished this part, although I do want you to initial your work somewhere. So go ahead and add your little artist chop or your initials somewhere on your paper. Yay! And then this is just part one. So part two will be linked below and hopefully also linked at the top of this screen if I can make that work. And um, the next part will be Audrey taking over and she's gonna show us a few fun techniques of how to fill in these flowers and make them look amazing. Are you ready for that, Audrey? I'm so ready. This was so fun. Yay! We're feeling kind of relaxed here. We may have to go get some lunch in between and then film part two. Mm -hmm. But thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Audrey, for being here. And if you guys like this, let us know below because we had so much fun today and we're kind of excited about maybe doing a few more of these this summer. Um, Audrey has a wealth of knowledge and techniques to share with us. Even for this particular piece, she had like five different techniques and I was like, whoa, we're not quite ready. Let's do one or two things at a time. <laughs> and um, so she's like, well, then the next time we do it, we'll do this. So it's going to be amazing. So thank you so much for following along and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>